Cheryl's one of our missionaries in Thailand, and uh, you just flew in not too long ago. Yeah, Short just, flight, yeah, easy. Yeah, 20 hours, no yeah, problem. Just no big deal. Well, yeah, hop, skip, and a jump. Wi-Fi, no problem. Yeah, good airline food the whole way. <laughs> yes, and you get your choice between Asian food and American food, which even when it's American food, it's still got a little Asian flavor going on. <laughs> But after two years, you get used to that, and you just roll with it. So. Okay, so we've known each other for a long time. Yes. We met each other in Southern California at a camp, and uh, I wouldn't have said, hey, here's someone who's an administrator at camp who's going to wind up as a missionary in Thailand. Tell us your story. Tell us what's going on. Yeah. Um, Scott's right. I worked for 15 years at Alpine Camp and Conference Center, a covenant camp in Southern California, as an administrator. I did paperwork. I answered emails. I did sales. I just did a lot of normal, everyday things that are not typically what you would consider a missionary. And when God called me, I said, I'm not a church planner. I'm not a pastor. I'm not a teacher. What could I possibly have to offer as a missionary? And even as I began the process, um, friends of mine, we would joke around and say, well, I'm only going for a short time and I'm not going to do anything that's churchy. So I'll just call myself a shenary because it's only partially a missionary. <laughs> but guess what? God needs people like me, people like you, who do ordinary things that people who are pastors and teachers and church planters are not gifted at. I'm pretty sure that Scott here as your pastor does an excellent job, but I bet you he's got people, support people, that are helping to answer phones mm -hmm. and answer emails and pay bills. That's what I do as a missionary for two different organizations. I, work, I went initially to work with a camp. They were building a kids camp in Northern Thailand. And so I was going to help them understand how to run the business end of that camp and to do a little bit with their programming. Um, we've hit some bumps along the way, which is typical when you're starting a mission. And so I needed something else to do. And so God said, well, I'm not done with you in Thailand. I need you to stay here a little longer. So I'm gonna put you in a, in a place that will use all of your gifts. And so he opened an opportunity for me to work at Cornerstone Counseling Foundation in Chiang Mai, which is just exactly what it sounds like. It's a Christian counseling center for missionaries and Thai people to come and get the mental health assistance they, they need without having to return to their home country. Last year, we served over 500 clients, people who are coming for marital counseling, um, individual counseling, people like me who are individual single women living on the mission field who just need somebody to talk to. So that's part of what I'm doing now, doing administrative work for them so that the two counselors who were doing what I now do as one person can continue to meet with more people. So another couple can come and get that marital counseling that they need instead of the mission field breaking them down, they end up divorcing and going back to their home country or a 13-year-old girl who's dealing with the struggles of everyday life living in a foreign country who, in order to deal with it, is cutting herself. She can come and talk to somebody and get the professional assistance that she needs. So I'm doing mission work. I'm helping people, but I'm not planting churches. I'm not teaching. I'm not a pastor, but I'm still a missionary. Mm -hmm. And this counseling ministry to missionaries is actually something that was missing before. Yes, absolutely. Um, for many years, mission, missionaries would go out on the field and there was no help. And so they would get into, you, you deal with cultural issues as well as everyday stuff. Mm -hmm. And people would get into a foreign country and get themselves into a problem and have nowhere to go with it. So they'd have to come back to the United States for counseling. Well, what happens is you come back to the United States, you start to work out whatever, and then you just go, I won't go back. Now, with the help of Cornerstone, someone who's in the Sudan who needs help, who needs to work or something, can come to us in Chiang Mai, spend two weeks, get the help they need, and return back and return back strong and be able to stay on the mission field instead of losing another set of missionaries to mm -hmm. some issue that they mm -hmm. just need a little bit of time to talk to a professional and get the help mm -hmm. that they need. So it is a very vital and important ministry. Um, and I had no idea until God opened this up. I mean, I know how important counseling can be to people. Mm -hmm. But as I was telling Scott earlier, I found out when I became a missionary and I started to get to know missionaries, missionaries are some of the most broken people you will ever meet. 
But the difference between their brokenness and your brokenness in your seat, they're not any more special than you are, but what they are is willing. They're willing to just lay their brokenness out and let God work through it, and God is actually doing the work through that brokenness. Because many of us, we're broken, and we sit in our seat and say, well, I'm broken, I can't do anything, Mm -hmm. because I'm broken, and until I fix my brokenness, these people just lay it all out there and say, God, work through me. Mm -hmm. So it truly is God doing the work. So the importance of what Cornerstone does helps those people work through those things and be able to continue to be Mm -hmm. missionaries and serving. Um, So someday, when the reality of Revelation, where it talks about Mm -hmm. there will be a great cloud, a great witness standing before and praising God, I will be able to stand and I will be surrounded by Thai people and Korean people and people, uh, Muslims and Sudanese and all from all parts of the world will be surrounded around me worshiping God because God chose me to be a part of a mission and a group and part of Cornerstone, helping those missionaries who are out there planting churches and sharing the gospel and doing all of those things that I don't do. Mm. But I get to be a part of that. And you all get to be a part of that because you support me. And because you're supporting other missions and you're praying for other missionaries. I I was telling the first service, I'm so excited to be here and to meet all of you. The only folks I knew from your church were Scott and his family through our connection in Southern California. And so as I knew I was going to get to come home and plan visits to talk to different people, Covenant Grove needed to be my absolute first stop. Part of that was because I feel the love that you share with me. I know that you're praying for me. God answers your prayers every day, and I'm thankful for that. Um, And I'm also thankful for the financial support that you give. But it was important to me to come here, to stand before you, to allow you to see me and to share with you what God is doing through me and through the funds that you're sending and the prayer support that you're giving. I want to encourage you. There are two things that are the Mm -hmm. most important that Mm -hmm. you can do for any men for any um, missionary. First, pray for them. It is the most powerful thing you can do for anyone. I think we've lost, like you were talking about, I really was hit by everything you said this morning. God's been speaking that word to me for months now. But we've lost our sense of what God can do through prayer. Mm -hmm. Christians have forgotten how powerful prayer is. So I encourage you, pray for missionaries. Pray for me. Pray for other missionaries that you know, and pray for missionaries you don't know. Because God will move, but he's much more moved when his people pray and ask for things. And secondly, missionaries need money. Now, I am excited and thrilled to be able to tell you that I don't need to ask for more money. God has provided what I needed. I'm thankful for the money that that Mm -hmm. Covenant Grove is able to provide. Um, So I don't need to stand before you and go, okay, church. Let's raise more money. Um, But I would encourage you, as my time comes to an end um, and your financial support will shift to somewhere else, to, you know, look at who that's going to be and Mm -hmm. look at the potential of being able to do more Mm -hmm. um, to help missionaries be out on the field. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, as we're wrapping up, uh, there's some challenges to doing mission work, even administrative mission work, which is so great to hear that administration is part of mission work as well but there's challenges because the thai culture you you share is kind of like a whatever type of culture in in thailand there are two two thai phrases that sum up their culture and the way they live the first phrase is my pen and i which means whatever so if something doesn't go right your coffee's not right somebody cuts you off on the on the highway my pen and i whatever don't care the other phrase is sabai sabai which means comfortable. It just means casual, whatever. And that's how they live. And so when you share the gospel with somebody who's whatever, sabai sabai, it's okay, cool. If that's what makes you happy, then I'll accept what you have to share. I could walk up to Scott and say, Scott, you need to know Jesus, and Jesus makes me happy, and Scott's going to go, ah, yes. Sabai sabai. Sabai sabai, my parai. I will go along with what you say, And Jesus then gets added along with Buddha and the other spirits that they worship. And it's just one more thing. There's no true conversion. 
So in order to have a true conversion, you have to build a relationship mm -hmm. with the people, which I'm sure you all have relationships and you have people that you know that you're friendly with and you give them a casual, friendly smile and I'm so glad to see you. And then you have others who you're very close with and you share your deepest hurts and concerns and you're mm -hmm. just very close with them. That's the relationship you need in Thailand for people to really come to know Christ. And you can't do that in five minutes. You can't do that in one year. Sometimes it takes decades to build that type of relationship. Mm -hmm. And so that's the missionaries that are working and the people that I'm assisting as an administrative role, that's what they're doing in order for those people who do truly become Christians, mm -hmm. making that true conversion, not just to say, hi, can I? And real quick, tell us the total population of Thailand and the Christian population. The total population of Thailand is uh, 65 billion, and less than half a percent are Christians. So, and you know, Christianity is very welcomed and, and it's very open in Thailand. But again, they just are like, well, we believe in our spirits and we have Buddha, so we, you know, it's sure, we'll add one more thing or we won't add one more thing. Yeah. So it's, it's a big world. To, to kind of try and bring them into understanding. But there is a movement. There are a lot of Thai Christians, and they're working hard to reach their people. And mm -hmm. so I'm there trying to help and encourage other missionaries to empower these Thai Christians to be able to make more Thai Christians. Amen. So Let's pray just, for our missionary, Cheryl, together. Yes. Dear Lord, thank you so much, so much, that you took Cheryl and you just called her to the mission field. Thank you that she got over that. She doesn't have to be a church planter or, you know, pastor or anything like that. That God, there's no tears of ministry. It's just people that you call to serve you. I thank you for the administrative people she's raising up around her. And I thank you for the Thai Christians that have come to faith. I thank you for the missionaries whose lives have been touched through Cornerstone Counseling. God, I pray uh, that as she's home, that you will, even as she runs around making visits to churches and to people, that you will give her rest, just to be able to rest in you, to celebrate you. And as she heads back to the field, just give her strength and endurance. Uh, things may not happen as quickly as we may want in the West, but help her to see your perspective and your timing and your movement in people's lives. In Jesus' name, amen. And I end, I will give you the traditional Hi, salutation, which means thank you and God bless you.